Taiwan's west coast isn't exactly a dream vacation destination in January. But the bracing wind sweeping across the beach at Datan suits Wenko Xu. I'll admit it's not my favorite weather because it's pretty chilly and windy. But it's just right for wind turbines. The conditions here on the west coast are ideal for wind power. The turbines run at full capacity for four months a year. Wen Koshu, an expert in renewable energy, works for the state energy provider, Taiwan Power Company. He studied in England, and that makes him somewhat unusual in his field. Wind power is still new to Taiwan. All of the 28 turbines in Datan were manufactured abroad. Some of the 70-meter-tall turbines here were produced by German wind power specialists Enercon. We're conducting annual maintenance. All the electrics, the mechanics, everything has to be thoroughly cleaned. The salty air clogs up the turbine mechanism. It'll be three or four days before we're finished here. To keep the wind turbine working efficiently, the latest software is being installed too. And even though Wenko Shu is a fan of German high-tech, his favorite turbine has some additional qualities that set it apart from the crowd. Its mast is covered with a colorful floral design. A nod to the art of the Hakka Chinese minority who live in the region. It's a dash of color on a wind farm that's the sole concession to green energy at Datan's large power plant. It mostly uses gas and oil to generate power to meet a third of the energy requirements of northern Taiwan. The proportion of power generated by renewable forms of energy is still shockingly small. As you can see, we have conventional power plant and also we have wind turbine. And in total, wind turbine capacity is 1% of the convention power plant. One percent for the whole of Taiwan. It's just a tiny drop in the ocean. Meanwhile, in the capital, Taipei, the air is thick with pollution. The little green man says it all. He doesn't appear to be walking, he's running. The city has a total population of six million people who always seem to be on the go. Their energy consumption is insatiable. High-tech Taiwan has to import around 99% of its fossil fuels, particularly oil and coal. That's both a financial and environmental burden. Now the Taiwanese government wants to change that. Environment Minister Stephen Shen has been charged with boosting wind power. In order to limit carbon dioxide emissions, we have to do two things. One, we have to cut energy consumption and use energy more efficiently. And two, we have to promote renewable energy forms. Wind and solar power play the most important role. We've set ourselves a goal of 1,000 wind turbines by 2025, onshore as well as offshore. And we want to develop solar power too. Taiwan aims to increase its wind energy production eightfold, voluntarily. It's not a member of the United Nations and is therefore not a signatory to the Kyoto Protocol. Nevertheless, Taiwan is determined to contribute to environmental protection. Perhaps that has something to do with the deeply rooted Taiwanese desire for harmony with nature. That's the desire at least shared by many of the visitors to the Longshan Temple in Taipei. Here, people are honoring Guanyin, the goddess of compassion. Air pollution is becoming a bigger and bigger problem in Taiwan. Green wind power would certainly help. Renewable energy is good for the environment, of course. But perhaps we shouldn't rely on it completely. The best thing would be to steadily increase its contribution to the national power grid. The Portuguese once named Taiwan Ilha Formosa, beautiful island. But if Taiwan ever intends to live up to that reputation again, it'll take more than a few government incentives for renewable energy. Entrepreneur Shui He Lai has planted his own forest, 15,000 trees, and he knows them all. 
This is the ginkgo biloba, otherwise known as the grandfather-grandson tree. It got that name because it takes so long to mature. The grandfather has to plant it so his grandson can enjoy its fruits. The tree has become very rare in Taiwan. The leaves show male and female attributes. This leaf here is the boy in shorts. The smaller one is the girl in a skirt. Entry to his park is free. Shui He Lai only asks that visitors not smoke, drink alcohol, or sing karaoke. <laughs> he wants them to come here to enjoy the natural surroundings, appreciate the park, and perhaps realize it's something worth protecting. I planted these trees to make the case for a different lifestyle. We have to get our needs under control. Environmental conservation is so much more important than economic considerations. Shui He Lai also hopes he might inspire others to plant their own forests. Up in northern Taiwan, the conservationist has a kindred spirit in the wind energy expert at Taiwan Power Company. I studied renewable energies, and this technology is very close to my heart. We have excellent natural resources here in Taiwan, wind, hydropower. We really should exploit them and develop more sustainable environmental policies. The intentions are good, but Taiwan's energy policies still have a long way to go.